So the first one on the list guys is Helenium. Now this is Helenium Moorheim Beauty, looking absolutely stunning. Um, it's finished its first set of flowers, as you can see here, dead petals, seed heads coming, which you could leave on and they'd be very ornamental and pretty, but we want more flowers before the uh, year ends. And you can see that it's already thrown up fresh flowers here, just coming now. There's one already opening. So we want to encourage that to keep on happening for as long as we can, whilst the weather's still good. And we could still have good weather way into the end of October. So we need to keep this color going for that lovely, a seasonal bit of color and interest. So what I'm going to do is go off where the plant's telling me the new growth coming from. So if I come down a bit, you can see this new bud here, there he is is coming off this main stem here. So I'm going to go in, that's an old flower there, and snip that off. There we go. And then that will put all the energy into that bud. Also by snipping the plant, more energy go into the whole of the stems and roots and encourage it to throw up a few more buds, which will hopefully succeed these ones that are coming on now. So I'm going to go in again. This one, if you can see, there's one, two, three, and there's a fourth dead flower on that one. Now there's nothing new coming up really too much on there. So there's shoots round it that's coming new. That's a fresh shoot there. So I'm going to take that one down quite low. There's also a fresh two sets of buds here, which are coming very much lower down on the side. So I'm just going to be a little bit careful here and go right down. There we go, get that one out of the way. That's the, oh, I've managed to snip. Let's see, there we go, garden fell. I've managed to snip that new shoot off, but I'll take that as a cut flower. Anyway, what I've done is taken it down as far as I can go without disturbing these front ones. So we've got a lovely bud there, a bud there. And actually, if you come down a bit further, if you can see, there's a little bud coming there. So now all that energy is gonna go into those and also encourage it to go on flowering further down to there's another little bud can you see so that that will follow the ones that are coming now so just by deadheading one it tidies the plant up for now whilst it's actually still in its prime um, and also encourages it to just keep on doing what it's doing reproducing buds to give us more flowers for that longevity of color for summer and into autumn flowers in the garden so that is number one, Helenium, and this particular one is Moorheim Beauty. Now I've just quickly popped over to my other Helenium, so I've got a couple in the garden. Now yours, we like this one, might not be showing you where the buds are. The buds might not have formed, but I've got plenty of dead flowers that kind of come off. So I'm going to show you, if you have no buds, new buds to go off, how and where to cut back the Helenium. So if I come to this one, there's your dead flower heads. And then further down, and much, much further down the stem, come down, can you see, if I turn it round a bit, there is a little, like, like a side shoot, think of a tomato, it's like a side shoot coming up from the main leaf off the main stem. So we want to go down as far as we can to that, because that's where the next lot of buds are going to come from. So it's quite far down from where the flowers are, but don't be discouraged. That's what you're looking for, you're looking for that lovely little side shoot there. So I'm going to gently snip in. There we go. That's taking it back. And then that will encourage that little shoot to come up and turn into a new bud. And it also thickened the plant up, giving us more flowers and thicker flowering stems rather than lots of willy weedy ones. There we go. So there's another one I've just done there now. Look, you can see where I've made the cut. And there's that little bud side shoot coming through there, which we'll have a bud on shortly. There's actually one there further down as well. So this one has got a whole host of flowers from one main shoot. I'm gonna go down quite far. So there's a little side shoot coming there, a little side shoot on the other side. Can you see a bit further up? So I'm gonna take it above the furthest one up. Snip, there you go. Nice side shoot coming up through that leaf and there and those are your new flowering shoots that will bud up very soon to keep that longevity. 
Right, number two is good old salvia. Now this one's already started blooming again, so again I want to encourage that very much like the helenium. So I'm going to partially cut back the stems. Now if I come in a bit closer, if you see where the dead head is there, again we've got these lovely little growths coming at the side, nice little side shoots, and they are going to encourage, well they're not going to encourage, we're going to encourage them to form into new flowers by taking off the old flower spikes. So you can go as close as you can, and there's quite a few, you see, around it and per, this is what I mean by tight knit, there's quite a few flowers per stem on a salvia, so they're quite close together, which is good for pruning, but also you just gotta be a bit careful when you're taking out the old stuff. And you can see those lovely new fresh shoots, which are gonna be your new buds. You see those little rosy buds there? Those are gonna be the new side shoots that will have new flowers on. So we're taking it down to there. The actual growth hasn't formed yet like there but it will especially now we're taking out the old shoots so it's really important if you want to keep your flowers going as good as they can be this has already started on its own but to make it even better that's why we're deadheading because we're encouraging any little side shoots that haven't formed yet or the ones that have to get all the energy into those the plant to get all the energy into those to get flowering again to give us more blooms before the autumn there we go some nice new side shoots there as well you can just trim this and be a bit harsh if you want to, but I'm trying to be a bit careful because as we've already got the lovely shoots coming now, it's a shame to waste them and the energy of the plant's already been put into those. So yeah, a nice little dead, dead head trim with your secateurs or snips, nice and neat. And that'll tidy that up and get these going into blooms. And that's it after I've finished dead heading it. Lots of nice fresh growth that will thicken up beautifully in the next couple of weeks. And these flowers will sing, and then these will turn into beautiful flowers that will sing later. Right, number three on our list is Phlox paniculata, my favourite. Scented, gorgeous blooms. Fantastic cut flower because, again, this is why I'm mentioning it in this video, it is a cut and come again flower. So you can see this is my second lot of blooms here, and these are the old ones here. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky. So Phlox Panaculata's old blooms that are going to seed look very similar to their buds. The only difference is, if you can pick out the subtle difference, the bud you can see is nice and plump and has got a little infill. This one's white and a little bit purple at the bottom there. That's your bud. Your old flowers have got no fill. It's just the outer. So there's no petals forming, they've gone, they've died. So that's your old, no fill in these little bracts. And the new, there you go, you can see they've filled with petals forming inside those little bracts there. So what do we do? So they are coming down the side. Again, it's all about side shoots with a lot of these flowers. You can see they're coming down the side of the stem and that's on the tip. That's the old flower on the tip of the stem. So we've actually already had a little flower there at the side. So we wanna go down to where the next cluster of side shoots are forming and side blooms are forming. So I'm just gonna check the plant, make sure there's nothing hiding underneath. So I'm probably gonna go back that one. Nope, that one there doesn't look like it's gonna do anything. So. There's a little side shoot there, but these are looking quite healthy. So I'm going for the next load of healthy side shoots. Snip it off there. There we go. So that will now, again, like the others, concentrate into these buds, the energy, but also these new side shoots that are coming might mean we get another, another flower after these ones have been out, another flower in a few weeks time. So this will just keep on flowering if you deadhead it. Again, into early autumn, mid autumn, depending on the weather. Um, and also keep giving all of these things, highly recommend keep feeding. So you can either use seaweed, which is quite high in nitrogen, good for growth, or I like to use potassium, which is uh, like a, a tomato feed, plenty of potassium and phosphorus in, which is really good for the root systems and then puts the energy into the flowering and the fruiting rather than the growth as such. So yeah, if you want growth first, go seaweed, followed by flowers, go a tomato feed, which is full of potassium and phosphorus to keep these beautiful blooms 
looking fantastic for as long as possible alongside your deadheading and trimming. Here's another old flower shoot at the front and you can see it's actually got this one's on the same stem that's coming out beautifully but again it has got these little side shoots that looks like it's been and gone however I'm really liking the look of the side shoots can you see there that are coming so I'm going to take this dead set of flowers the flower stem back to there even though that looks like that's already had a little flower there but the side shoots are looking fab so let's get all the energy into those and then do you know what let's take that little dingleberry out that'll focus those into producing flowering shoots flower backs which are quite pretty could might try and dry those because they might look really nice in like a christmas or autumn wreath in a few weeks time get them nice and dried save waste um yeah and then there we go that's that's the difference that's the one that's got the buds in there's another little show of the be the after from the before you saw. So all the dead heads come out. So that's looking tidier and neater and really focusing our attention on the beautiful flowers that are. And then for the plant, focusing on the buds that are to come. So this is quite a well-known one, I think, and normally gets mentioned around Chelsea time because of the Chelsea chop. Now my Napita really good cut and come again um, perennial which could be used for cut flowers um, although the flowers don't tend to last as long if it's a hot house um, but certainly cut and come again for the garden and its displays in the garden alone so mine has just got the odd little bit of purple but it's looking quite messy um, now so I've noticed again new growth coming through so nice signs of new hope and again that new growth all being well with weather of course and timing should be perfect now with catmint i am going to be a little bit heavy-handed here because there's so much new growth I'm not too worried there's no new flowers that i'm going to knock off right now um, and it's young enough to recover if i do accidentally nip any of these there's plenty of the other ones to overtake so i'm literally going in as deep as i can and snipping my way through being quite harsh or do you know what catmint's one of those you either love it or hate it with the smell I quite like it so you can see I'm going quite deep in there nicely a couple of young shoots sacrifice but not too bad you see that's quite a nice clump there doesn't matter if your cut's not completely perfect as long as your secateurs are fairly sharp and aren't crushing the stems too much if you're crushing the stems you're making it susceptible to disease Actually, shears would be quite good to do a napita with. A lot of people do shears for their napita earlier on in the year. So, yeah, you can see that lovely fresh growth and where I'm cutting back into quite harshly. That's going to thicken up the stems beautifully. What's there already. And then that lovely new growth, that fresh new growth that's coming. All that energy is going to go into there. Smells divine. You could, if you like them, Keep the flower heads and dry them and then use them as aromatics in potpourri if you'd like if you like that kind of smell uh, or even keep the dried flower heads for reeds for the autumn probably not so much Christmassy but they're quite autumnal once they get drying and um, we'll just put them straight in the compost bin and that's that that's lovely just a couple more stems around the back that I've got to get so with Nepita it's pretty good so I've actually put mine in late, so this is new to my garden this year. I put mine in quite late in June. Um, but if you've got a Napita, so next year, this one, and if you've got a well-established Napita, you should get quite early, early flowering on it, um, depending on weather again. So you could get as early as end of April, even into early May, um, if you've got a nice hot spring. Um, otherwise, it's May onwards. Um, so every time, you could probably get two to three cut and come again sessions maybe even four if we have a really long autumn um, out of it so yeah this is definitely a great cut and come again and like you've just seen me do I wasn't as particular cutting this back um, it's not as fussy and it recovers so quickly so I'm not as worried about knocking off the odd new shoot that's coming through because it will recover and ultimately put its energy into the, all the other shoots that are coming anyway so yeah you can be quite harsh if you're a bit of a clumsy gardener with no finesse or can't be bothered to be finesse then an apita is a great cut and come again variety for you because you can just literally shear it if you want to and it's that easy so yeah in a few weeks time 
these new shoots should be providing us with another set of flowers for early autumn. So number five is Lithrum, and this particular one that I've got in my garden is Lithrum Robert, which is absolutely outstanding bright pink, as you just saw a minute ago. Um, again, this is actually really easy. If you leave your perennials a little bit longer, here's a little tip, if you're not sure. If you leave your perennials a bit longer after they finish flowering, the plant will tell you where the new growth's coming from. <laughs> your new flower spikes, like this one is. So that's a new one there and this is an old one here if you're you know okay for time and you haven't let them go too far the best way again as with all the other flowers i've shown you is that's the old flower stem look for the new growth so this has come up quite nicely but it might start off a little bit lower again coming from a side shoot off that main flower head stem so if i go here actually if i take that one off first nice and low Ooh. Hang on, just try not to snip that off. There we go. If I then move to the back one, you can see there's an old flower stem. So if your growth hasn't come through too much, it's just starting to come there. So that's where we want to focus on, as close to there. So then all the energy from the stem is going to go into the new growth, which is going to give us the new flowers. So here we go again, new growth, new growth snip in and off and just to show you just to make sure you know that it's real your new growth that look like that to look like that will then expand and grow out and you'll see there that's the beginnings of the next bud for the next flower that then turns into this then turns into this Right, number six, wasn't going to include this, but actually it's coming up roses, literally. Um, this is verbascum. So not all verbascums may do this, the taller varieties that have one shoot and sort of it's all over. The more dwarf varieties, I'll pop the variety of this one on. It's, um, I think sugar plum or plum purple, something like that. So I'll pop it on for you in just a second. Um, that's actually, the dwarf varieties do tend to flower and then have a succession. And this one is really giving us a good example of that so this is the first flower shoot which started um when did it start where are we are august probably beginning of july end of june beginning of july and then we've got another succession coming through there so that will in the next couple of weeks get a bit of growth on and start coming out so this will give us a nice bit of flowering on of a basket all the way through into end of september by the looks of it so yes, worth having a look at your Vibascum. And sometimes the tall varieties do it as well, especially if they came out early in the season. Um, it's worth giving them a trim back unless you want to keep the seed um, because they will more than likely throw up side shoots again. Um, and now what you want to do is a little bit different because they tend to send up one initially. And then if they do throw flowers up, which I remember from when I had the garden centre, they do tend to throw up three or four different flower heads after the first initial spike. So your initial spike, you just want to find out where it goes back to not all the way to the base not a problem but as far as you can and take the main stem out and again that gets all the energy back in and even if your verbascum hasn't started showing new signs of buds or budding take off the old one anyway because it may well encourage it to bud up again so yeah that's looking lovely i'm really happy with that because i planted this again quite late um so early summer and it's looking really nice already um, and giving us yeah two lots of flowers already this season how good is that amazing so for bascoms check the variety dwarfs are better than the uh the taller varieties but give them a chop i even noticed when i was in the garden center the really tall flowering varieties uh, like caribbean crush um, and the primrose colored one they tend to actually they were flowering off this the main flower stem so you could just cut back some of the flowers off the main flower stem if you see actually can you see there there's one that's actually flowered and finished but yeah that's a, a side shoot flower coming um it would have been coming yeah it looks like it's already flowered that one but yeah if the, you've got the really tall varieties do that first initially and it might flower from the main stem to start with for a second flower and then for the third flower once you cut it back 
it may send up new shoots. So definitely worth giving a go with your verbascums if you can. Also tend to find the early part of the season, caterpillars absolutely shred verbascum to bits. As you're coming into late season towards the autumn, they're not around, they're already established into butterflies um, and there's less caterpillars around. So you don't tend to get the leaf stripping that you get early on in the season. So definitely worth doing and a little tip for you there. So that's number six, verbascum.